River Run. Eddard and John stand before Lord Hoster Tully in the main hall. Hoster is aware of the ongoing conflict and all that had happened. Two things. His daughters can't marry, and a greater part of the realm is in need of his forces. Both Eddard and John try to convince him to join their cause. King Eris murdered good friends of his, loyal friends, and, luckily enough, it doesn't take long before Hoster to agree. Yet, he still addresses the issue of marriage. Not to mention Robert Baratheon is lost in the wilderness somewhere. John promises the man that his marriage to Lysa will still happen, yet he can't say anything for Catelyn. After some discussing, Eddard eventually takes a deep breath and claims he will take Brandon's place. He's Lord of Winterfell beside his brother Benjen. It should be him, it's right. Catelyn, who is standing at the side, doesn't know what to think of that. She looks at Ned with uncertainty. Hoster, however, finds it a good idea and accepts Eddard's proposition. Both Ned and Catelyn share a rather awkward look at each other. With that being said, Hoster also announces he will rally his troops and march with both John and Ned against the king. As John and Eddard make their way back to the army camp, they still have the issue of missing Robert. John is sure that he's hiding. The king's men are all hunting him. He's probably in one of the towns down south. Eddard agrees. So that's where they will go. At Stony Sept, Robert again sits downstairs in William's house. He has a bit of fun banter with William's children. Robert still has his wound in his side, but it's all healing well. The five of them again have something to eat and enjoy a warm atmosphere. Later, a man knocks on the door and informs William that there has been words. Apparently, both John Arryn, Eddard Stark and Hoster Tully are rallying together against the king. They are marching down south as they speak. That makes Robert hopeful. They are all looking for him without a doubt. Soon, they will arrive at the gates of the village. The man stands up and already thanks William for his kind deeds. He will surely be rewarded. William thanks him greatly. At Storm's End, Stannis looks down from the castle walls as Mace Tyrell has completely surrounded them. Some of his men urge to surrender, but Stannis would rather die than do that. He promised his brother to hold his castle, and that's what he'll do. In the siege camp, Mace looks at the keep and laughs. He will make sure no food or anything reaches the inside of those walls. Soon, they will all starve, and that will make them surrender. Mace is confident and sure of himself. All the while, Stannis growls at the man from afar. He begins to give orders to start to ration their food supply. They will stretch it out for as long as they can. At King's Landing, Aerys sits in his chamber with several of his commanders. All of them have prepared the city for a possible battle. Aerys is confident that the rebels will never even make it so far. They must strike again and harder than before. One of the generals claims Mace Tyrell has laid siege to Storm's End, while Randall Tarly searches the Stormlands for Robert Baratheon. Aerys suggests to send reinforcements to Randall's position. If they can capture Robert, they have their chance to win the war. Elia lies in her chamber while being treated by several nurses. She's holding her newborn son in her hands, called Egon. Little Rennes also sits on the bed. Elia smiles at the two of them, yet she feels empty now that her father is nowhere to be seen or heard. She notices Eris walking past the chamber. He quickly looks inside, seeing Elia's two children. He gives nothing but a sour look to them. It's at this moment that Elia truly feels like an outsider. At Stony Sept, Robert sits in his chamber upstairs while checking his wound. It's getting better and better. It won't take long before he's fit enough to fight again. Suddenly, he hears noises coming from outside. He hears people shouting. Apparently, there are men at the gates. Robert immediately jumps upright and heads downstairs. Eddard and John are there. He knows it. He and William both run into the streets to look for themselves. Several people open the village gates, 
only to see Randall Tarley and his men march through. Upon seeing them in the distance, Robert freezes and immediately runs back inside. William orders him to shut the door and hide the children as well. Randall sits on his horse as his men spread out through the marketplace and various streets. He announces that they are looking for a fugitive, Robert of the House Baratheon. He was wounded in previous battle and is a great danger to the realm. Anyone who could give him his whereabouts will be greatly rewarded. Yet everyone stays silent. Even when Randall starts to name the exact amounts of money, no one says a word. The Tarly men all spread out and start to search through the streets. Robert and William's children hide inside their house, especially Robert is extremely nervous. After several attempts to persuade some people, Randall Tarly sighs and announces that he will stay here with his forces until they have found the fugitive. They are certain he's here. The longer they have to wait, the worse it will be for the villagers. William heads back into the house and finds Robert. After calming down the children, he says how Lord Tarly is staying here. He won't stop at nothing to find him. Robert can feel his heart thumping. He doesn't stand a chance alone. He can only pray for Ned and the others to get here as fast as possible. Outside the village walls, Randall sets up his camp. Some of his generals ask him why he's so certain to look for Robert in this place. Tarly is dead certain. They tracked him all the way to this village, and it's the only place in the area where he could have gotten help. They will search this town from top to bottom and use drastic measures if they have to. With an iron fist, the Tarly soldiers all searched through the village, invading houses, questioning people, sealing off the entire village. No one leaves or gets in. Villagers are taken out of their homes. Some even resist but get forced against the ground or a wall if they don't cooperate. And while all of this happens, Robert is forced to stay inside, feeling bad for all the people out there who must suffer because of him. Between the trees, two lone riders spot the village of Stony Sept. They stay close to the ground and look at the entire site. The army surrounding the whole complex and all of the Tarly banners in sight. The two riders eventually urgently head back the way they came from. At King's Landing, Aris again walks through the halls. He enters a chamber where his little son rests, only to see he's not there. Shocked, he runs outside and orders several men to find him immediately. However, he quickly spots Rayla standing on one of the balconies, holding Viserys in her arms. Aris walks up to her and immediately grabs him, taking him back to his chamber. Rayla claims she only wanted to show her son a bit of the world. The king won't have any of that and curses her for being an idiot. An assassin only needs one good shot to undo everything. It quickly escalates into another fight between the two. They stand alone in the chamber of Viserys as Aris curses her for all the gods to hear. Barristan and Jaime stand outside powerless to do anything. Rayla now also curses her husband for being a fool. A fool for thinking he's a god himself, let alone a dragon. After hearing that, Aris strikes her down again. Baby Viserys starts to cry while watching. Before Aris can strike his wife again, Rayla warns him. If he puts another hand on her, she will undo the life that rests inside her. Confused, Aris takes a closer look at Rayla, only to see she has a bigger belly than usual. She's pregnant again. That shocks Aris as he backs down. Rayla almost laughs, feeling like she has somewhat of control over her husband. Finally, Aris eventually heads outside and orders Barristan and Jamie to lock her up in her chamber, which is what they do. Aris walks away while Rayla feels somewhat of a victor. Somewhere in the Stormlands, Eddard, John and Hoster stand in a large tent while two riders stand before them. They claim to have spotted a large Tarly host at the village of Stony Sept. It almost seemed like a massive search party. Eddard immediately knows Robert must be there. 
John is careful asking how many men there are and how well the village is defended. Apparently there are indeed several thousands of Tarly men. The village itself has a wooden wall surrounding it. Eddard wants to attack as soon as possible, but John isn't sure. They have no guarantee to find Robert there. Hoster, however, claims that even if Robert isn't at Stony Sept, it would still mean a great victory. Not to mention Randall Tarly would never take over an entire village if it wouldn't be of any importance. After some discussing, Eddard and Hoster both look at John, waiting for his decision. At Stony Sept, numerous villagers are taken into the streets for questioning. Some are even threatened as her Lord Randall Tarly permitted them to use severe actions. The man himself sits on his horse as he watches all of his men swarm the village, searching every building. In his house, William enters Robert's chamber. He claims the soldiers are on their way here. Robert must leave right now. There are people outside who will help him. Robert quickly grabs everything he can and heads outside while wearing a cloak for disguise. Several people immediately take him with them. The soldiers are only several houses away. As fast as they can, Robert and the others run through some alleyways and as they eventually arrive at the brothel where he was several nights ago. It's then that the soldiers arrive at William's house. They all enter and start to search the place from top to bottom. William and his three children stay downstairs while being watched. After some searching, one of the soldiers eventually finds some tracks in a chamber upstairs. Tracks and spots of blood. Somebody wounded was there. The moment this is revealed, William is immediately floored to the ground. His children scream but are restrained as well. The soldiers order William to speak up and say who stayed in his attic. William refuses to speak. As the several men start to beat the man's face, he still refuses to answer any of their questions. It's then that Randall Tarly arrives and is also informed by the situation. Randall thinks for a moment and eventually suggests that they should threaten the children. Upon hearing that, William starts to panic. He urges them not to hurt his sons, but yet he won't answer any of the soldiers' questions. As they beat him again, the children start to scream. It all turns into chaos now. The soldiers punch William again and again, holding the children tight. Everyone is screaming and yelling around them. Until suddenly, the bells start to ring. Everyone stops. Randall turns around on his horse and looks at the bell tower. Several villagers start to ring the bells as loudly as ever. Then, shouting and yelling is heard. Randall immediately rides to the village walls. All of his men are panicking as they run through the gate and into the village. Tarly jumps off his horse, having no idea what's going on. He heads to the top of the wall and sees a massive army storming from the hills. Stark, Aaron and Tully banners all waving in the air and even Baratheon banners as well. Randall suddenly feels panic inside him as he ordered his men to close the gates of the village. In front of the massive host, Eddard and John are riding their horses with their swords in hands, roaring loudly. Before the men can even close the gate, the cavalry storms through, mowing down soldier after soldier. Randall watches his entire plan crumble down in front of him. All he can do right now is order his men to fight back, which is what they do. Ned sits on his horse as he cuts down soldier after soldier. We follow the Stark man with a long continuous shot while he rides on his horse to the marketplace, cutting down everyone on his path, much like the scene with Jon Snow during the Battle of the Bastards, until his horse gets impaled by a spear and Ned falls down to the ground. The spear soldier wants to stab Ned as well, but then gets cut down by Lord Hoster from behind. Tarly also jumps down from the wall and starts to slash through every man that meets him. The entire village of Stony Sept is swarmed as the rebels ride through the streets. All of the villagers close their doors and windows as they hide inside. William is also taken inside by some others, including his sons. They also close the doors for protection. 
Robert also hides inside a brothel as he hears all of the sounds of battle outside. He thinks and thinks, wanting to go out there and help his friends. But the people among him claim he can't, he's not even fully healed. It would mean his death. Robert knows and contemplates every decision he could make. The battle is hectic and fierce, rebels fighting Tarly soldiers in the streets, in the marketplace, even on the rooftops everywhere. Some have lost their weapons and even fight with their bare hands. In the marketplace, Ned fights with his longsword. He suddenly spots a massive Tarly soldier, a giant of a man. The giant comes storming at him, swinging a massive sword of his own. Ned tries everything he can to evade him, diving to the ground, dodging to the side. The moment he slashes with his longsword, the giant strikes him down and throws the sword away. Disarmed, Ned runs back towards some houses, the giant roaring as he pursues him. Inside one of the houses, a hiding family screams as Ned is thrown through one of the windows. The giant storms through the door as the family runs away upstairs. Eddard tries everything he can to get away, but it seems like there's no stopping this monster. Eventually, the giant grabs Ned by the throat, preparing him to die. Eddard grabs the first thing he can find, a hammer. Before the giant can do anything, Ned slams the hammer in his face, instantly killing him. They both fall down. Eddard stands up and heads outside, but then falls down again, being a little bit dizzy from the fight. In the streets, Hoster fights alongside his men, until they meet Randall Tarly. Both Tarly and Tully men clash with each other. And in the midst of them, Hoster and Randall are pitted against each other. Both men fight with swords and use every strength they have. They fight hard and well, until Randall manages to slash his sword across Hoster's leg. The man falls to the ground as the fighting continues all around them. With Hoster bleeding and panicking, fearing for his life, Randall stands in front of him as he raises his sword to slash the final killing blow. But then he gets rammed to the side by Robert. No one saw it coming. Randall is startled to see Lord Baratheon standing there with a sword of his own. The young lord looks with vengeance in his eyes. Here I am! With the sound of a thousand voices, Robert storms at Randall and completely unleashes on him. Hoster can hardly believe what he's seeing. Not only that, but also the fact that with Robert come hundreds of villagers, all men and boys storming through the streets, all armed with hammers and pitchforks and spears, fighting alongside the rebels against the Tarly men. Whatever chance Randall had, it's gone now. Lord Randall fights against Robert in the midst of all the chaos, but his men are overrun. Many of them even jump on horses and flee out of the village. Randall shouts at them to come back, don't retreat, but there is nothing he can do. Robert keeps on slashing and stabbing and unleashing all his fury on Randall, almost defeating him. But then Randall manages to kick Robert back and runs away himself. Robert pursues after him through the streets all the way to the marketplace, but then Randall jumps on a horse and flees with the rest of his forces. Robert roars loudly, cursing him. The battle is done. All the rebels and villagers stand in the streets and marketplace. John barely has a scratch on him. Eddard has recovered from his fight and Hoster is being helped by his fellow men. But nearly all of them look at the village wall, where Robert the Baratheon stands with sword in hand. The wind going through his hair Plenty of soldiers even look at him, if he is their own king, the true king, the King Robert Baratheon.